What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. Wow, so pretty disappointing round for myself, but in this video, we're going to jump into how my team fared, how my trades went, and then we're going to also cover a few of the guys that I'd be looking to target going into round 14. I know a lot of teams are going to be struggling this round, so we'll cover some guys that I think you should be targeting. Let's jump straight into the video, guys. I hope you enjoy. So, wow, round 13, I took a pretty big hit in round 12 just so I could compensate for the next two weeks so I could plan. I knew a lot of teams would be struggling in round 14 um, <clears throat> and round 13 as well, but because of the buy changes, it kind of worked out that a lot of teams sort of had a good run this week with more pressure on the round 14 buy now, but... As for my team, I think I scored 18.55. We'll jump into the laptop so you guys can see how my team actually went. Uh, 18.55, currently ranked at 250 overall. So since the beginning of the buys, I haven't really made any progress in rank. I've just been around the same, which is somewhat disappointing. But I do expect that this week I will have a pretty good round and I'll sort of explain why in a minute, but if we have a look at my team, in defense, Jaden Short, I thought that he would have a pretty good game at Optus Stadium, I did think that on the wide oval there, that he would be able to get plenty of marks, and that certainly was the case, I think he racked up about 15 by memory, uh, big 120 score, could be potentially his highest score of the season, I think, Along with Tommy Highmore, 110, absolutely out of the clouds. Don't know where that came from. I was on the phone to my dad before the game talking about how all these rookies were scoring well this week and I, how I had Tom Highmore on the field and how I wanted or needed him to get at least 65. I thought I was being quite generous there, but... Um, yeah, look, he was on about 45.50 at quarter time, and um, and he's pulled out a 110 out of the hat. So, bloody oath, mate. Uh, plus three of the round goes to him. Uh, then we move on to the midfield. This is where it starts going a little bit sour. So, you can see uh, my three trade-ins this week. Lockie Whitfield, little bit disappointing. He didn't look to get tagged. I did flag that he could potentially cop a low score this week due to a tag, but he didn't really look like he was getting much attention. He just wasn't getting those plus sixes, but I don't think there's anything to worry about here. I'm pretty confident that he should be the number one defender going forward. The next guy, Patrick Dangerfield. Jesus Christ. Big mistake on my behalf. I mean, I... Went and took a risk there. I did bring in Dangerfield, expecting him to be right to go off the bat. Uh, against Port Adelaide, I thought that he'd be right, uh, raring to go, having missed quite a bit of footy. And a player of his class and calibre, I didn't think that having that two-month stint off would really affect him too much. I did expect him to play forward at times, which was the case, but... He didn't really look to be targeted too much when they were going inside 50. He looked really slow and lethargic around the ground. He didn't look like he was moving too well. He did attend quite a lot of centre bounces at 59%. So, look, I mean, he's going to drop a lot of coin now. I was hoping he could potentially pull 100 on debut and then maybe only drop 20 or 30k. But... He's dropped 55k odd, and he looks to drop another 50 this week, potentially. 
Um, so he's going to be a bargain buy for all the guys that don't have him, which is pretty much the whole competition. Um, so yeah, that sucks for me, but hopefully he bounces back this week. Uh, Andrew Brayshaw was good. Dan Houston on debut was great. 98 points. He was one of my top targets this week, guys. So if you did jump on board there, well done. He's also one of my top targets this week as well. Gordon O'Brien, not too much to talk about there. Uh, Josh Kelly was absolutely fantastic. He was my number one target for last week. So if you jumped on board there, you got well and truly rewarded with 152. Aaron Hall just keeps getting it done. I think five of his last six games have been over 120, which is absolutely absurd. Isaac Heaney with a 40. If you jumped on two weeks ago, you would probably be quite disappointed with his output. If you jumped on four weeks ago like I did, then you've copped a couple of good scores and it hasn't been too bad. He has made about 80k for me and he's one that I don't see being close to a top six forward and because he's not playing this week and I need numbers, he's probably going to be one that gets traded for me this week. So that's just a quick look at my side. Um... If we go into now just some guys that I think could be potential targets this week. Uh, oh, just a quick one, guys, as well. You guys that have been following me for a while may notice that Darcy Parrish is not in my side anymore. He was part of my trades last week. I went very uh, outside the box, very boisterous with my trades. I did trade out Darcy Parrish. Uh, didn't work out too well because I went to Lockie Whitfield, but I mean, my trades in general last week just didn't work out very well. Um, I went him down to Whitfield because I thought that their output for the rest of the year would be quite similar, and that move did net me 130k odd, which then got me some other upgrades, one being Dangerfield and Houston. So I removed two rookies off the field by doing this. I think the play in general was quite good, but I just missed out on a lot of rookies that others picked up. So Amadi, Newcomb, Edwards, Foley, all these guys scored high 80s to 90 plus, which is more points than what these premiums that I brought in scored. So I lost out there pretty big time. And I also don't have Darcy Parrish now, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, this week, because I didn't bring in Newcomb last week, he's a must-have. He's very cheap. He's going to be playing in the midfield group for Hawthorne, so if you don't have him, I know a lot of people jumped on last week, but if you don't have him, he's a super target. He's the number one rookie this week and the only rookie that really looks to be playing at this stage. So if we scroll down... Have a look at some names here. Toot Miller, I probably wouldn't be picking up at that price. Uh, Guthrie's interesting, but I think I prefer to just wait and see how he returns from injury. A lot of these players are, are coming back from injury and performing quite poorly. Um, but yeah, look, he, he's only had the, the one or two games on the sideline at this stage. His scoring is elite. Um... They do have a, a tough run of games in the next few, so that's just something to worry about. But if you look at his game against Gold Coast, 105 points from 59% time on ground. That's the sort of ability this guy has. So I think he's an option, but just wait for him to come down a little bit. Bontempelli's in great form, but you're paying real top dollar for him. Jared Lyons is one that I don't actually mind paying up for. At this stage, you should have close to no rookies on field. And the next step or the next progression is to get to these top tier guys. Now, while Lyons is quite fully priced, I think that if you have a look at his run of games, North... Geelong's a tough one, but then Adelaide, St Kilda, Richmond, Hawthorne, Gold Coast, Frio, Collingwood. He's got a, a dream run. So 
I think that he's quite a good target despite the high price tag, and he's also very unique. So he could be a good option to try and make up some ground on the top sides. He's one that I'm interested in. Brody Grundy uh, will be back next week, we think. So he's obviously a high priority target. Uh, Laird Mills, if you don't have these guys, then, then they're targets. But a lot of the guys that are good targets this week are guys that are on the buy as well. So, I mean, Jack Zeeble's one that is interesting, but with Tarrant back um, and with uh, Luke McDonald due to come back soon, I'm not really sure what Zeeble's role is going to look like. I just don't think he's going to get the plus sixes that he has been. If we look at his scoring, since that 170 where a lot of people jumped on board, he hasn't really gone over 100, so he's one that's interesting. I think that he's one that I'd be waiting on just a little bit more. Uh, maybe wait for those guys to come back. Christian Petraka is one that I quite like, but he's on the buy this week, so maybe wait till uh, next week. Lockie Neal. So Neal's one that I think is a great target. I've got some slight concerns and queries with him. The first being that whilst his run of games are super good, it looks like if we take a look, he's got North Melbourne who have tagged at times, but then Geelong as well. And O'Connor looks to have been doing run with roles quite consistently. Despite Neil not being fully 100%, they're probably going to go to him. So that could potentially... Be quite a poor score for him, but in saying that, his run for the rest of the year is absolute dream, and we all know what sort of quality and capabilities Neil can produce, so he's one that's very high on the trade target list. I don't mind getting on this week, despite the fact that he may have some low scores incoming, just due to the fact that if we take a look, a lot of teams are going to have to be looking at, at getting Dangerfield in in a couple weeks. Mitch Duncan's one that's going to be getting cheap in a couple weeks. And then people will also need to be bringing in Brody Grundy. So the opportunity, especially going back to two trades, that might, might not actually be there to bring in Neil. So if you can this week, I don't mind it. I think that it's good. Uh, if we keep going down the list, we've got... Uh, Dunstan, probably not an option. Dan Rich, I like as an option, as a more unique de uh, defense guy. His low score for the season is 80 points, and his very unique ownership. He does come in a little bit cheaper than some of these other def uh, defender options. Andrew Gaff is getting very cheap now. His scoring's been inconsistent, but... West Coast do have a, a decent run of games at Optus Stadium where he clearly does perform better. If we take a look, we know we know Gaff's a 110 guy in the past. Uh, he's scoring of recent. He hasn't actually cracked a ton in his last four games. So he's, he's going through a pretty poor patch and his scores this year have been up and down. But if he does get a little bit cheaper, uh, where can we see his break even? Um... 134 break even. So maybe wait um, until uh, the game against the Dogs. And then if you, if you can pick Gaff up around that 650 sort of mark uh, to, to that 680 mark, I think Gaff's a good buy. So he's one that I'm looking at. Uh, keep going down. Travis Boak, uh, he could be one. Uh, I'd avoid still side bottom. It looks like he's out of the midfield rotation. His CBAs on the weekend were 4%. Uh, it looks like he's going to be playing forward from now on. Main looks like a good option, but he is getting to that very awkward price tag now. Uh, Cornelio, when he comes back, depending on his role, could be a great option. Simpkin is a guy I'd be looking at if you can't afford to go up. I'd rather just pay the 60k more and get Lockie Neal, though. Kyle Langford is a super interesting one. I think a lot of guys will target him this week, so we'll have a quick look at his profile. 
113 average in his last three games. Low break even. We take a look at his scores. 114, 123, 102. So four of his last five have been 100 plus. Does have some tough games coming up, but also has some quite easy matchups. I think that Langford is an option, but he's got his his CBA usage has been increased quite a lot. So that's definitely a positive. But on the flip side, Dylan Shield looks to come back in two to three weeks. And when he does, are we going to see Langford get pushed more out to an outside or a forward role? At this stage, you really want to be bringing in guys that you think can be a uh, top in that zone or close to being a top in that zone. So he's one that has some queries with him, but I do like the option. I think that with his role at the moment, he should continue to be 100 plus. And he's currently priced at 93. So I think there's value there. Basher Hawley's interesting. We know he's got a super high ceiling. He's also quite cheap. He is on the buy this week. But I think he's one that certainly can be looked into. He does have quite poor injury history. But he's definitely one of those defenders that can go 120 plus. I think that he's one that... If you're looking for a pod option and you don't have the funds to go up to a more higher priced guy, I think he's one that can be looked at. Uh, keep going down the list. I've just skipped a few. So uh, Dustin Martin's cheap still. Yo's getting very cheap. But it looks like Yo's going to be on managed minutes for the rest of the season. So... It's hard to go there, but if we see the time on ground increase, then he's certainly one that you can look at. Shannon Hearn's been great in defense. Duggan looks like he's getting very cheap, so he's one to monitor. Uh, Lambert was great on the weekend. Uh, Pendles looks like a great post buy target. He's on the buy this week, but he's certainly playing more midfield now. So he's one that I'm very keen on, despite the fact that he is a bit older. Collingwood could potentially throw the magnets around. I still think that they're going to need some experience in the middle there. It looks like they're playing to goey through there. Um, and having that experienced head in there to sort of help the younger guys around the contest. I think he's the man for that role. So I think that he will be in there, especially being the captain as well. Still side bottom, he looks like the one that's been pushed out and, and will play forward. So Nick Newman, also a great option. Looked like he was on for a big score before he got concussed. He should be back this week, and I expect him to average around 90 for the rest of the season. So at the price, I think he's... Definitely an option. Uh, keep going down. Who else do we have around these low 500 price? Um, we'll just skip down a little bit. Taron Thomas is interesting, but he's very awkwardly priced now. I think... Who else do we have? Connor Rosie's interesting if he can hit some form. I know last week he was quite good. 98 last week. He did kick a big bag of goals, but we know that he can be very dangerous and he can be that 85 type score. He's currently priced around 70 odd, so there's definitely upside there if he can turn it on. Matt Rowell is a super interesting option. We know that last year he strung together those games at the start of the year where he did average 105 adjusted. His break even's 120, which is pretty high. His first game back, he did score 48 points. He did attend 65% centre bounces and he was their second highest for Gold Coast behind Tuke Miller. So I think that... They're definitely going to play him in there. The thing with Raul is he's missed so much footy already. 
So Gold Coast aren't going to want to stunt his development and growth as a player. If he's right to go, which he clearly is because he's back in the side, Gold Coast are going to give him as much opportunity to thrive as possible. 73% game time. So I think that we can see that go up over the next couple weeks. And I think Rao is going to be very good for the rest of the year. I can see him averaging 90 plus. He's very cheap. He's one that you could wait this week because his break even's quite high. But at the same time, he's very easy to step up to from a rookie. So I think that there's not really too much wrong with going with him early. I mean, it is slightly risky just because we don't know how long it's going to take for him to hit his peak again. But he will get there eventually, and he's certainly one that you'll want at some stage. So I don't mind getting on him early. He's one that I'm looking at to bring in. Uh, uh, that looks like it could be about it. Nick Haynes as well is down here, 471. He's one that is interesting too. He will be highly targeted, very low break even. Uh, I don't think he's going to be near a top six guy. So that's like really my only queries there. But he is very cheap as well. So it's very easy to get to him from a rookie. Also, a move that I can see a lot of people doing, one that I'm considering is potentially trading a James Harms to a guy like Haynes. A move like that will net you 100k, which you can use towards an upgrade. The points difference between those two guys probably isn't going to be huge. And therefore, I think that with not many rookies being available this week, I don't think we're going to have much in, in terms of rookies to bring in. You might have to look at doing some cheeky moves like this in order to generate that coin to do those upgrades. So... I think that Haynes is an option just purely based off the price. He could potentially average 85 from here on out, so that would be fantastic. But that's just a look at my team, guys, how I went, what sort of guys I'm looking at targeting. At this stage, I'm looking to trade Harms to potentially Haynes, Heaney to Langford or Neil. Um, and then I'm also looking at Rao and Newcomb because I don't have Newcomb. So that's a brief look at what I'm looking to do, who I'm looking at targeting. As always, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Leave a comment with your trade ideas or if you need any help with your side. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my plaid, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school. Special.